am I? That's what we're going to discuss in this video. Who is Serafina Safi? Well, my real name is Samantha and I'm 38 years old. I live in West Virginia. I put Pittsburgh because I seem to get more views whenever I have Pittsburgh. <laughs> That's like the closest big city to where I live. Um, yeah, so I was raised Roman Catholic. I was raised by my grandparents and my parents were married until the day that my mother died but they raised my brother and sister not me i went to a catholic high school i was like super into catholicism i went to church every weekend we were a very strict roman catholic family um and i went to college and i went to um, be a teacher. I wanted to be a history teacher. That was my big thing. And then I like changed that I wanted to be a counselor. Um, so I actually took a special class and I became a residential advisor. So I did counseling in college for um, other college students and I got my own like room, dorm room, so I didn't have to share with anybody and that was like a cool perk of being a residential advisor is having your own room. Um, so I worked doing that. I actually got to my junior year. I got into a very toxic relationship. It was my first boyfriend. He's a diagnosed sociopath. Um, he was diagnosed in prison. I didn't know what hit me. I have a Pisces Venus, so we tend to uh, gravitate towards sociopaths and narcissists. So I started like researching about um, sociopaths, antisocial personality disorder, cluster B, back in like 2001. <laughs> And there wasn't very much out there. You had like the DSM and that was pretty much it. Um, so I didn't really understand the pathology of it and I didn't understand what happened to me. I didn't really understand trauma bonding and um, Stockholm syndrome. I, I, I didn't, but I, I, you know, I tried to understand and I started reading a lot of books on it. Uh, with tarot, I've always been naturally psychic because I'm a quadruple Pisces, so it's just like natural to me. But I've been developing it uh, to make myself more psychically aware. So I've done many psychic development classes. I've done many tarot classes. My first tarot deck was gifted to me when I was 14 by a very old man who said that I was psychic and I was destined to be a tarot reader. It was a rider weight with the meanings on the top and the bottom. Also, whenever I was 14, the craft was like the big um, movie in town and you know I was Roman Catholic I went to a Catholic high school but a, a few friends of mine we decided that we wanted to be a witch's coven so we started like researching about Wicca and you know the different and I still use that to this day I wouldn't call myself a Wiccan um, however I do use a lot of Wiccan principles in my magic and I am a witch and I do do a lot of magic. I prefer to do Vedic magic. That just seems to resonate with me. Hermetic magic, alchemy. Um, those are some really big ones for me. I've read some grimoires. I have never practiced the Goetia. Um, I tried to make an Ars Orbital, but then I scared myself. I also researched um, uh, uh, Enochian, Enochian magic. But that, yeah, again, I, I was afraid. <laughs> like I, got, I, got, I freaked myself out. And if you're afraid, you shouldn't be doing it. So I, I prefer working with the Hindu gods and goddesses and also the Greek god, a Hellenistic magic. I'm really big on that. I love working with Aphrodite. I love working with Lakshmi. I love working with Lolita. I love working with, I, I was kind of working, starting to work with Saraswati, but it's really hard to get Saraswati and let, uh, Lakshmi together so um, yeah it's <laughs> I, I'm a goddess worshiper I do like the goddess energy um, more so than the god energy it, it, I just seem to work better with it <laughs> and yeah so my family is very prominent in the area that I'm in most of my family are either teachers or doctors or dentists. The, those are those are the three careers. I have a lawyer too. Those are the careers that my family does. And um, 
I'm the only person in my family that did not graduate from college. So I'm like the black sheep. I went, I went, I went the first time for elementary education and then I changed to wanting to be a history teacher and then I changed to wanting to be a school counselor and then I changed to I'm in a toxic relationship and I want to drop out my, my junior year. So I dropped out and then I went to beauty school and I actually worked doing makeup in a department store. So I was doing makeup in a department store and I was going to school to be a beautician, but I don't like touching strangers. Like it was really freaky. So I decided that that just wasn't for me, but um, I did go to school. I did pay an insane amount of money. I have about $80,000 in my education. So um, I then started working as a customer service agent, which I feel is just absolute torture. I don't think humans should have to endure that. And you really see the dark side of humanity whenever you do customer service. I worked for companies like Comcast, Verizon. I've worked for AT&T. I've worked for Apple Computer. I've worked for clothing stores. I've worked for um, First Energy. I've worked for a lot of different companies. I have 13 years of call center customer service experience and I absolutely hate it. <laughs> I've talked to a lot of people. I've talked to a lot of people and um, I will say that California, I was surprised. I really like people in California. New Jersey, all of my bad calls came from New Jersey or Maryland. Uh, my worst call that I ever had that I still have nightmares on, and I actually have PTSD. I have complex PTSD, trauma-based trauma. That's one of the things that I get flashbacks about was this call. It was so bad. It was from Virginia. This man was just absolutely the most despicable human being I have ever met in my life um, and I wish that I would have never received that call my managers would not even take it um, he didn't even have our service he was mad because we sent a flyer in the mail and I apologized I said you know we'll, we'll put your address in as a do not send but those are just mass sent and oh it was a two-hour conversation of him cussing me out it was horrible it was horrible I can't even begin to tell you how traumatic that man in Virginia was I still have nightmares over it it was back in 2009 and it was horrible horrible and people in New Jersey I mean in New York, it's hit or miss, but California, I really liked everybody in California. Maryland, they're mean. They're mean. Pennsylvania, not so much. Um, Maryland, Virginia, and New Jersey. I mean, they, I, I don't think that anyone should have to take calls. They should just have like a computer doing it because we're stuck on a phone with a headset at a computer, nothing, nothing else for like eight, to 16 hours a day. I had worked on that for 16 hours a day. All you see is a computer screen and people yelling at you nonstop, time after time after time after time after time. I never want to do it again. <laughs> I never want to do customer service again. I really enjoyed driving. I did. Um, that was my last job. I was actually delivering medication to hospice patients. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them died like very soon after I would start them on my route, which was a little bit difficult. I worked as a delivery driver for a nuclear pharmacy um, however I didn't feel like I was very safe the whole time I was there and the hours were weird like sometimes she would work me full-time sometimes she would work me five hours a week it was just it was like unpredictable I couldn't really make a schedule or do anything well I was there for two years and I never did get like a standard full-time it was all like Either you work a lot or you don't even work at all that week. There are sometimes I didn't even work at all that week. So money was all like over the place and but I really enjoyed what I did. Uh, it was very easy work, very fun work. And whenever I drove, I would like listen to self-help things. Um, I went to college again in 20. 10 and 2011. I went, I changed my major to business. Um, 
I actually am a first semester senior. I dropped out because my mother and my grandmother died within three months of each other in 2012. My mother died at 50 years old of pancreatic cancer and my grandmother, who I had lived with and took care of because she had a stroke when I was eight, she was paralyzed on her left side. She died in my arms in my house that I live now in her bedroom from a blood clot. Um, it was very sudden, very unexpected. So I have PTSD from that as well you know watching my grandmother that raised me die in my arms that does something to your mind so I I have a lot of um I, I do have PTSD I will I will admit that and I have been to counseling myself and I have been through counseling classes I have done counseling for the university that I was at, I was a residential advisor, I had to take special classes. In high school, I actually was also a peer counselor, so I have quite a bit of counseling experience plus customer service experience and um, psychic experience. I've taken psychic development classes. My best psychic development class was actually a free one and I actually shared that in my community tab so if anybody wants to take that it's absolutely free it's on youtube she's fantastic i always said if i made it as a psychic i would always give back to her because she really helped me a lot um but i have paid for other psychic development classes i am a reiki master i did that without the intention of doing a youtube channel i did my reiki um my Reiki classes for my dog. He's epileptic. He's been epileptic for 10 years. I did make some videos about a canine epilepsy and how I do my Reiki sessions with him. We actually, I have that video of me doing my Reiki session with my dog who's epileptic. Since we started doing Reiki and we actually also did CBD, um, his seizures went from monthly to like maybe once or twice a year. Um, he did have them twice this year because he had an infected paw and he didn't do really well on the antibiotic. Um, I have two dogs and three parakeets. I do live alone in my grandmother's house. My grandmother has passed away and she left me her house. So I do uh, still live in my grandmother's house. And um, I'm alone. I, I've had a uh, boyfriend that hasn't been traditional since high school. It, it's really crazy. He's a Capricorn and I'm a Pisces. And my parents, uh, my mother was a Capricorn and my dad was a Pisces. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, we uh, are one of those couples that break up makeup, but it's been like over 20 years and we're usually, um, when we break up, it's usually for a week or two. It's usually whenever one of us decides to date somebody else and the, it usually doesn't last and then we get back together. <laughs> that seems to be like what we do, but um, it, it's just like how we've done it. It's just worked for us and it, it's a very unconventional type of relationship, but um, yeah, and he travels a lot. He's an engineer, so he's like in this state, that state. He's all over the place. And he's really encouraged me to do this channel. Like, I was working and, you know, I was making $4,000 a month doing the, uh, doing the delivery for the hospice patients. And I was working a lot and he was like, he came over and he was like, okay, so how much did you pay for those lights? And how much did you pay for this? And how much did you pay for that? And I was like, Ew. and he's like, well, why aren't you doing YouTube? If that's what you invested in, if that's what you want to do, you need to actually make videos. You need to actually do it. And I was like, I just don't, I don't have the time. I don't have the time. Um, I did go to other psychics. I have actually helped out other psychics. I have financially donated to other psychics. I have bought extended readings from other psychics. I have bought pr uh, private readings from other psychics. My favorite was Elisa Jane because she's a Gemini sun with a Pisces moon and I'm a Pisces sun with a Gemini moon and her readings just would like blow me away. I started watching her in 2016 and I was a huge fan and I was like okay so I'm gonna buy a private reading. So I bought a private reading and I wanted to see like how she did hers so I could like model mine after hers. Um, so the first one is I just got a private reading from her and 
it, it was shocking because she did it in her room. There was no lights on, like I could barely see her. And I was expecting it to be a little bit longer than what it was. It was just like a very rushed reading. And I loved her, like her, I was, I was honestly, I was, I was disappointed. Um, and then I uh, bought a couple of her extended. I bought about five of her extended readings, which were really good and really did help me a lot. And then I did buy another private because I wanted to talk to her about, you know, becoming a uh, an online psychic. Like I wanted to know about her steps, and she was really mean to me, like really, really mean to me. And then she told me that my dad was gonna die, which really upset me because my dad was on dialysis at the time. He's still alive, he didn't. Um, but it, it was heartbreaking, you know, you idolize somebody for so many years and then they're mean to you. So I understand how that is. And, you know, if anybody wants help, I obviously I haven't been very, <laughs> very successful, but I do have four years of trial and error of what works and what doesn't. So if anybody is, you know, doing a psychic business, there's six billion people on YouTube, okay? And I personally am subscribed to hundreds of tarot channels. So there's plenty to go around. If you resonate with somebody, that you resonate with somebody. My style is not going to be their style. And you know, not everybody's going to resonate with how I read. That's just how the world works. And not everybody's gonna resonate with how you read. So I really don't think that there is any competition in the psychic world because we're messengers. That's that's what we are. Um, so if you like need any help, need to know trial and error, how to do this, how to do that, reach out to me through email. Um, I'll be more than happy to help as best that I can um, to any any psychics because I know how hard that was on me. And I know that um, there was a lady who purchased um, an extended from me because one of my videos cut off. I did do it in a live stream and I sent her, I was like, you know, I'm sorry that happened. It is here in the live stream and it's, I didn't under realize that the audio had cut off at the end. It was like the last two minutes, but she didn't really miss any very much. Um, but she bought the extent because she thought that that's where the audio was and it wasn't and she was very unhappy. Um, but she got like downright cruel. So I just had to block her. Um, she was unreasonable. And I was trying to make things right, but she was just unreasonable, so I just blocked her. And I, you know, I'm sorry about that, but it is what it is. And I'm, I, yeah, it's already uploaded, and I, I can't take it down. I can't change it. I've already deleted the footage. Um, there is a live stream of it that does have the full audio. So um, if anybody is, you know, in that playlist with. Uh, messages from your deceased loved one and the the audio cuts off. I think it's in uh, pile one it happened. There is a live stream that I have attached to it that you can go to and, and get the audio. It's not in the extended. The extended's completely different. Um, so I, I apologize for that. Um, I was thinking about just taking that whole thing down. I didn't realize that the audio had cut off. So now, now I listen um, to them whenever, before I upload them. And it takes me a while to edit and get things up. And you know, that's why I like to do the live streams. So that if something like that happens, it's like, okay, well, here's the live stream. It's live on my channel. You can just go to that. Um, Cause most people, as you, you know, you can see in my, uh, channel walkthrough whenever I take you behind the scenes into my analytics most people only watch 45 seconds of my video so they don't watch it the whole way through um, so it's very rare for somebody to actually watch one of my videos the whole way through and that's just all over YouTube that's just how it is um, it's called retention and that's one of the biggest problems that most youtubers have is retaining and that's why these short Form content is doing so well because people don't have the attention spans anymore. They don't have the attention span to sit there for 10, 15, 20 minutes and watch an entire tarot reading. They want one card, one answer, under 60 seconds. Usually they'll click off after 40. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it's just how our society has evolved. 
Um, you know, some people, they're different, but the majority, which is what we have to look at whenever we're a channel, we have to look at the majority, the majority of everybody. Um, what else? I think that's, that's all that I have. So, uh, thank you. Thank you all for joining me. And yeah, that's, that's me. That's who I am.